Hi everyone, today we're going to take a little break from gameplay videos and I'm going to describe some of the terms you may come across when you're planning or describing orbits in Kerbal Space Program. Now all of these terms are real life terms with real life calculations, so if you are interested in space, astronomy, or you watch a lot of rocket launches then you may have already come across these terms and be familiar with some of them, but hopefully I can fill in any gaps you might have. So first up are the two ones you should be most familiar with, are the apoapsis and the periapsis. So apoapsis is essentially the furthest point of your orbit from the parent body that you're orbiting. Technically this is meant to be in terms of your distance from the centre of mass of the body, but quite often it's given in terms of the altitude from the surface. In Kerbal Space Program this is how it's done. The periapsis on the other hand is almost the opposite of this, it's the closest point in your orbit to the parent body. Again this is meant to be in terms of the centre of mass, but in the game and quite often in real life it's given as a distance from the surface. As you can see on the screen right now, the craft that I'm demonstrating this with has an apoapsis of 11 million metres plus 600 kilometres for the radius of the planet, and a periapsis of 4 million metres again plus the 600 kilometres. So next up is eccentricity, which is basically your orbit's deviation from a perfect circle. Now this is on a sort of fairly abstract scale, it's essentially a ratio between things. So a perfect circle is 0 on this scale, uh, between 0 and 1 is an elliptical orbit, and then above 1 means that you're not really in an orbit, so you're just going to go past the parent body and then escape. Now as I mentioned this is essentially a ratio, there's a couple of different ways to calculate it, but the more obvious ratio based one is on the screen right now. And if we drop in the values from our own orbit we come up with an eccentricity of 0.43. Obviously we're in an elliptical orbit, I did that deliberately so we actually have some values to see here. So we're going to leave eccentricity aside for a moment, it will come back in a later calculation though. And we're going to move on to the semi-major axis. Now the major axis is essentially the diameter of your orbit at its widest point, and the semi-major axis is just half of that. So it goes from the centre of your orbit out to the furthest point. Now this is different to the apoapsis because the apoapsis is measured from the centre of your parent body, whereas the semi-major axis is measured from the centre of your orbit. And when you're in an elliptical orbit like I am at the moment, those two points are in different places. Now because the apoapsis and the periapsis both lie along the major axis, a quick way of calculating it is just to take the two of them, add them together and divide by two. And dropping in the numbers from our own orbit, we come up with a semi-major axis of 8.1 million metres. So next up we have the semi-minor axis. Uh, this is very much similar to the semi-major axis, except perpendicular to it. So calculating the semi-minor axis is where the eccentricity comes back in, as you can see on the screen right now. And if we drop in our familiar orbital values, we come up with a semi-minor axis of 7.3 million metres. You can see that the semi-major axis and the semi-minor axis are quite close in value for this orbit, even though it's got a very different to apoapsis and periapsis. Now finally we have the orbital period. This is simply the time you take for a complete orbit, as you'd expect from the name. And the two important values you need in order to be able to calculate this are the semi-major axis and the standard gravitational parameter of the planet you're orbiting. Now the standard gravitational parameter is simply the mass of the planet multiplied by a constant, which for the planet Kerbin happens to come out to slightly over 3,500. The units, by the way, are some variation of meters cubed per second squared. Uh, quite often it's given in kilometers cubed per second squared. This is one of those units that you just don't try to understand in terms of visualizing a physical thing. For those interested in such madness, the gravitational constant that's required to calculate the standard gravitational parameter is in units of newton meters squared per kilogram squared. Just be happy that you'll never need to know that. Anyway, you can see the calculation for orbital period up on the screen right now. And as per usual, if we drop in our own values, what we end up with here is a orbital period of 21.4 hours. Now if you glance up at the top of the screen at my information display, you'll see that my time to my apoapsis is about 21 and a half hours right now, and given that I've just passed my apoapsis, that should be roughly my orbital period. So quite luckily, my calculated value matches up with what the game is telling me, and I'm not talking complete nonsense. 
So up on the screen right now will be the various equations I've shown you today. But the main point of this video was just to show you what the terms mean so that if you come across them in the future, or maybe even in future videos in this series, then you will know what they mean. Anyway, that's all for this episode. Hopefully it will be useful for you. Look out for future episodes where I explain more of the maths for the Kerbal Space Program, and by sheer coincidence for real-life rocket programs. And as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.